Hi. I got a tape I want to play. You may recognize this as the opening scene from Stop Making Sense, widely considered one of the greatest concert films of all time. The 1984 film chronicling three nights of talking heads performing at LA's Pantages Theater in December of the previous year captures the band at their peak as a live act, with the late Jonathan Demme who'd go on to direct The Silence of the Lambs at the helm. With A24 having released their 4K restoration of the film in theaters, the band have recently reconvened after what feels like an eternity and plenty of drama between certain band members to promote the new restoration at the Toronto International Film Festival, as well as recently being interviewed by Stephen Colbert. They also didn't necessarily play all their best songs during those Stop Making Sense shows either, and their music in the years since that concert film came out has aged like a fine burgundy wine transcending generational music listening divides in the process. This got me thinking, what if David Byrne, Jerry Harrison, Tina Weymouth, and Chris France set old tensions aside for good and got back on the road for a hypothetical reunion tour? What would they play, and how would their setlist be structured, especially as they haven't been on stage together since their Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction ceremony in 2002? This video is the first in an ongoing series where I build my dream set list of 18 songs, 15 for the main set and 3 for the encore, for a certain band or artist, and explain song by song why I put it in a certain order. My goal here isn't to improve upon Stop Making Sense, you can't as that is a perfect concert film, but to combine my personal favorite Talking Heads tracks with which ones I think sound especially great in a live setting. Keep in mind also that this isn't a ranking of my favorite Talking Heads songs, but a list of ones I'd most like to see them perform live. And if you don't see your favorite Talking Heads tune here, know that there were tons of songs I was bummed to have to cut. And if I made any decisions with song selection and or order you don't agree with, let me know in the comments. But with that in mind, let's get started. <laughs> I'm kicking this off with the opening song from their 1980 magnum opus, Remain in Light, which they didn't even play during Stop Making Sense. But in my opinion, it's a perfect opener for any Talking Heads show and will get people dancing right off the jump. It's funky, it's up-tempo, it's groovy, it's eccentric, it's lively, it's pretty much everything that makes Talking Heads a goat-tier band rolled into one song. The first track from 1979's Fear of Music technically was in Stop Making Sense, but was cut from the first theatrical release before later being included years down the line once re-released. Playing this immediately after Born Under Punches would hit fans with two upbeat, endlessly groovy, African-influenced album openers for the price of one. Except this time with dataist and completely nonsensical lyrics. Now we're turning the energy levels way up. Where the first two tracks act as a great way to immediately get juices flowing, The Great Curve would waste little time sending the crowd into overdrive and getting people dancing and in a frenzy. The song finds yet another excellent balance between danceable rhythms and David Byrne's paranoid existential lyricism and therefore, it's a must play. <laughs> Yes, I know, I've only been including super upbeat Talking Head songs so far, but let's face it, if I'm ever going to see them in my lifetime, I'm gonna wanna dance my ass off. And Making Flippy Floppy is yet another song that could get people pulling shapes across the floor and or their designated seats. It's a six minute dance floor heater that still maintains the eccentric nature Talking Heads and especially David Byrne are known for, and that's exactly how I want a Talking Heads show to be. Also, I'd love to see them use that blood red background with the white text during that song again like they do in Stop Making Sense. Hey! 
turning things down just a little bit here, the lead single from the band's 1985 album Little Creatures is one of their most simplistic and accessible sounding, but no less fun and very much still in the talking head spirit. And She Was is a song that feels designed to get crowds into a good mood, and above all, it's a tight, vibrant, well-written pop song about some woman dropping LSD. Seriously, what more could you want? Going further back in their catalog for a song with a similar vibe to And She Was, you can't get much better than this one. It also feels basically like a song about touring, as David Byrne ponders the idea of moving to another city, whether it's London or El Paso, Texas. Perhaps it's a bit too on the nose, but it's also a song I'd be bummed to see them not play. One of the slinkiest and most hypnotically funky tunes in the band's repertoire, this song, or at least the way they performed it during Stop Making Sense, which I prefer over the version included on their Speaking in Tongues album, would fit like a glove in the middle section of their set. As I said, Slippery People sounds much more impactful live than on Wax, and the interplay between Byrne and his backup singers makes the song what it is. While this song is among the band's biggest hits, and therefore could be pushed toward the end of the show, I think it makes a lot of sense to have it immediately after Slippery People here. In part because of the similar tempo and overall vibe, but also because it would just make for a sick transition. This Must Be The Place is a quintessential Talking head song, and one bound to get crowds very, very excited. I'm turning the energy levels back up here with another of the band's most recognizable songs. Life During Wartime is arguably still the all-time greatest song to do the running man and or full-on jog to. It's also probably the catchiest song ever written about post-apocalyptic guerrilla warfare. In any case, David better bust out those delightfully quirky dance moves again. I got three passports, Although Cross-Eyed and Painless was the set closer in Stop Making Sense, and was a damn fine one too, I personally don't love it as that type of song. As a mid-set tune though, it absolutely rips. A song about David Byrne losing his shape trying to act casual, so much so that he might end up in the hospital, is, appropriately, one of the band's most high-energy tunes and should be played on every date of a hypothetical tour. There was a This is literally the song where the title Stop Making Sense came from, I mean, how could they not play it? Tina's bassline is funky yet hard-edged, David's lyricism is as esoteric as ever, and it's another example of a Talking head song, specifically a song from Speaking in Tongues, that pops way harder live than in the studio. Plus, it's an opportunity for a whole new generation of fans to watch David perform the song in that suit. Talking Heads' famously slowed down cover of Al Green's Take Me to the River immediately follows Girlfriend is Better and Stop Making Sense, and I'd keep that transition very much intact here. Though David Byrne was initially against releasing cover songs under the Talking Heads name, it wound up becoming a top 40 hit in the US, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and is still one of their most enduring tunes. And once again, it's even better live than on record. <laughs> Everyone is trying to 
get to here i'd give the show a little more room to breathe slow down and get a bit more intimate much like he does in stop making sense i'd want david byrne to perform this live with an acoustic guitar either by himself or alongside tina weymouth on bass like in the film either way it would be a much needed musical palette cleanser and one with plenty of lighters and or phone flashlights raised in the crowd even if heaven ultimately is a place where nothing ever happens this is a moment where it'll feel like heaven is right here on earth And now, Jerry and Chris come back on stage in full force to perform the band's only Billboard Top 10 hit. Burning Down the House is an art rock anthem in every sense of the word, and I'd expect crowds to loudly shout the song's title once David sings it. It's one of their catchiest and most fun songs in general, and I'd be waiting with bated breath for them to play it and to see how people react just hearing the track's opening acoustic guitar notes. Yes, I'm as bummed as you are that I couldn't find any other song from Talking Heads 77 to include here until now. But Psycho Killer, to me, is the ideal pre-encore song for a Talking Heads show. Not only does it hit fans with one of the band's earliest hits, as well as David Byrne singing in French, it's a genuine crowd pleaser that will be bound to get fans singing along oh whoa oh oh ay 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 ah every time. Although David plays it acoustic to open Stop Making Sense, a full band electric version is 100% necessary here. Here, the encore opens with bassist and drummer slash real-life married couple Tina Weymouth and Chris France taking center stage and performing the most iconic tune from their side project, Tom Tom Club, and doing it similar to how they did it in Stop Making Sense. Genius of Love is a song that will not only get fans dancing and excited given how many times it's been sampled in some massive hit songs over the years, but it's also just a fantastic encore opener type song in general. David comes back out here to perform a fan favorite and the closing song to Little Creatures. I initially considered making this the set closer before opting for the song I'll talk about after this, but it nonetheless fits really nicely during the encore. The drum rolls, the gospel-like harmonies, the anthemic hook, all of it is a fantastic recipe for getting crowd set for a grand finale, especially since the band never played the song live as they'd stopped performing together before it came out. Yep, you knew this would be the closer. Whether you sleep behind the wheel of a large automobile, or in a beautiful house with your beautiful wife, or husband slash partner, etc., you can't deny how Once in a Lifetime is the sound of talking heads and producer Brian Eno capturing all the best things about themselves as musicians, plus significant inspiration from Fela Kuti, into a bonkers yet perfectly crafted pop song that's peculiar, anxiety-ridden, and hugely catchy all at once. Oh, and we get to hear David Byrne imitating evangelical preachers. Great tune. Once in a If a Talking Heads reunion tour ever were to happen, one thing that would truly be a shame is that we wouldn't get to see them perform with their longtime touring keyboardist Bernie Worrell, who died of cancer in 2016. All in all though, this would be a deeply satisfying reunion set from start to finish and one very befitting of a band who achieved a great deal during their era, have influenced countless bands in the decades since, 
but who also, for many reasons including a lawsuit from Burn against the other members, never really got to say a proper goodbye to their fans. If you ask me, this setlist would be one hell of a way to do it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If I missed any Talking Heads songs you feel would be crucial to have them play during a reunion tour, or if I should have my own dream set list in a different order, let me know in the comments. I've also made a playlist, which you'll see in the description, of videos of songs in this set list using live versions wherever possible. And of course, don't hesitate to hit me with suggestions for other artists you want me to do a dream set list video for. Be sure also to check out my previous video about the history of Canadian hip-hop before Drake if you like rap music and haven't seen it already. And as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. This has been Sound and & Vision, and I'll see you next time.